Sounds great. Great. Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's June 18th, 2020. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's look at the, uh, at the agenda and be sure that we agree on topics and then we'll work through the agenda. So what we've got is we'll talk about open action items. Uh, then we are delighted to have Rishab with us to talk about his progress on the Git plugin performance improvement Google Summer of Code project. Um, interesting results, good results, and fascinating progress. So we'll give him as much time as he needs, ask questions, record notes, etc. Then Alex and I are going to talk briefly about the Adopt Open JDK for Docker image uh, change and work through what it means, uh, do some discussions briefly, and we'll we'll conclude there. Are there any other topics we should add to the agenda? No, I think that sounds good. Okay, great. All right, so let's do the review of action items. Um, I have the action item to switch the meeting URL to use the CDF Zoom account. I've done that. Rishab, you will notice that you can share the screen without me having to do anything. That is one of the results. That's He's switching to use that's great F zoom account that's uh, great. i have still had the open action item to open a jenkins enhancement proposal for docker operating system support i apologize yes i will get that done uh, we are in progress right now on the docker build rework pr or a derivative of it so so that's encouraging uh, oh no i take it back the one i'm in progress on is the next one so we still need to make some further progress on the Docker build rework PR because this one gives us a better structure. Alex, this is the Docker manifest and parallel build changes that I haven't done yet. Anything I, you I, want to report there? I've started to take a look at it, um, running some local builds and things like that. Um, so far it's looking good. Um, the way I apparently have my Docker authentication set up, it's, uh, it's I'm getting a 401 uh, at some point when it's trying to publish um, because the, my login is timing out. So I need to look into that. Okay. Now, and this is one that since I don't think I have authorization to do anything to the Docker Hub account, and I hope I don't, uh, I should be able to do the evaluation as well and run it in some sort of a local mode, a dry run mode. Um, yes, I think the dry run is still there. Okay, great. All right, so this, this still needs review. There's lots to do in, in, in Docker image work. Yeah. And the next was the Alpine um, image update PR, and that one is PR956 here. That one I would, had started review on it yesterday, last week, some additional um, review yesterday, and further this morning. So, all right. Um, anything, Alex, you wanted to report otherwise on action items? Any other topics there? Uh, no. Okay. Rishab, I think we're ready for you on the Git plugin project. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Let's see. I Thank need to ready. stop sharing, don't I? Here we go. Yes. All right. All yours. Okay. Uh, Git plugin performance improvement. As Mark has mentioned, I'm uh, the GSOC 2020 pro, uh, student. Rishab is my name. So uh, the objective of the project, so we, it's a simple objective to improve the performance of Git plugin. And uh, we've identified two ways to do it. The first is to use, use JMH, which is a framework, Java micro benchmarking harness, uh, which uh, provides us uh, a safe environment to test benchmarks. Uh, so we want to use benchmarks to identify uh, known or unknown performance issues with the existing Git implementations we have. That is the CLI Git and uh, the Java, pure Java implementation, JGit. So uh, this is the first objective. Uh, we have uh, created, we have already created Git fetch benchmarks and we have some great insights from uh, those benchmarks and uh, we are going to implement those inside the Git plugin. Uh, the second is to fix the existing performance issues we have in the Git plugin. I'm going to discuss them uh, further in the presentation. 
So what have we done and what are we doing? The first was the first thing we have done is to integrate JMH, the module inside uh, the Git client plugin. So uh, basically what I've done is that I've added the benchmarks to the test module of the plugin. And now the benchmarks can run on CI Jenkins.io, which gives us a, a, a wider selection of platforms where I, where we can run the benchmarks and have a comprehensive uh, result. Um, result profile and how it looks it's it's basically like this a, a, a pipeline a sample pipeline so we uh, we build the repository then we check it we run the benchmarks and then we 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 have a json uh, which is a report which we can use to um, feed in into a visualizer where we can uh, see the benchmarks visually how uh, things are going and how the operations are performing so this is the first thing we've done after this, we have uh, tried to fix the redundant fetch issue. So what is the issue and how was it affecting the Git plugin performance or is it affecting actually not was. So uh, the issue is very simple. It's uh, the reason behind it is not simple, but uh, it's, it's so this is a freestyle project. I'm, I'm trying to check out a rep repository. So as you can see here, I, I am trying to fetch the upstream changes from the repository once, which is expected, which is normal. But then again, I'm doing the same thing incrementally. So, uh, so this second fetch is redundant, and uh, we've actually uh, we've written test cases to understand it. We've we've uh, worked through some scenarios to understand if we're losing or breaking any use cases if we're avoiding this second fetch. And we've we've come to the conclusion that. Uh, Though we have some interact, uh, interactive testing left right now, but still we have come to the conclusion that we can remove the second fetch. But we were not sure that if the, if the removal of this uh, second fetch is going to improve the performance of the Git plugin, we we did not have concrete numbers to show that to support that hypothesis. If this is a hypothesis that removing the second fetch would actually improve the Git plugin's uh, performance, so for that initially I created a benchmark four benchmarks actually with git fetch uh, the benchmarks were simple the first benchmark is a simple a single git fetch with a narrow ref spec which basically means that it is trying to fetch one single deposit uh, one single branch which is the master branch the second test was also a baseline single git fetch test but with a wider ref spec that means all the branches then the third and fourth tests are double fetches with the same thing, narrow ref spec and a wider ref spec. So what, before even fixing the issue, what we could see from the benchmarks was, as you can see, this is an interactive chart. As I progress with test one, test two, test three, and test four, for each repository, the execution time increases when, when I'm moving towards test three and test four. Yes, Mark. Okay. So. So what we're seeing here is as you're iterating through the, the, the horizontal dot that moves across, that's telling me yes. repository size. Is that what it is? The, the, so test one is smaller. No, no. Tell, tell me again. What are test the, one, two, okay. three, and four? Okay. Test one, test two, test three, and test four are basically benchmarks. Test one and test two are benchmarks which uh, calculate the execution time for a single git fetch. Test three and test four are benchmarks which calculate the execution time for double git fetches. What you're seeing here, the, the x axis is the repository size and the y axis is the average execution time which is increasing. Rep repository size, I have four repositories. The sizes repo, for repo one, it's less than one MB. For the second one, it's uh, uh, five MB. For the third, it's 90. And for the fourth, it's 300. Uh, what while we're iterating dots, it's basically running through the benchmarks I have done and the results of those benchmarks. So what you can see here is once I go from test one to to test three four, with repository three and four, you can see a a, a remarkable increase in the execution time. And with repo one and two, there is not much of an increase, which kind of tells us, gives us a hint that with a smaller repository size, the incremental fetch would not add too much performance overhead. But with a larger repository size, there is a possible chance that uh, the second fetch would be adding uh, considerable 
performance overhead. So this was kind of a theoretical experiment before fixing the fetch, which, uh, which gave us a reason to actually remove the redundant fetch. Now, um, so how did we fix it? It was, uh, it was a simple fix. We added a Boolean to check once we're uh, using this first fetch, we will not use the second fetch. And so once we did that, are we seeing any change in performance? And to see that, I used profiling. Profiling with the uh, Java flight recorder in on G JDK 11. So I ran the Jenkins war with the updated Git plugin with my uh, changes, with my fix for the redundant fetch issue uh, on the Jenkins war on JDK 11 with the JFR Java flight recorder, which is, uh, which is a profiling tool, comes with the JDK 11. It has very low perform uh, pro uh, performance overhead. So, uh, so what you can see here is, so I took two repositories. Uh, one is the Jenkins IO of 40 MB size. And one I took the Samba Git repository, which is uh, near about 300 MB. So with these two repositories, uh, I, 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 I performed the simple checkout build. And here, what you can see is without the fix for the smaller repository, there is not much of a difference. It's, it's basically a 10 second difference. If, without fix, it's two minutes, 55 seconds. And with the fix, it's two minutes, 46 seconds. So there's a 10 second decrease in the uh, execution uh, time for the git fetch calls uh, for the plugin overall. And with the second, with a much larger repository, 300 MB size, there is uh, approximately a two minute difference once we remove the second fetch which is i think a considerable decree improvement in the performance uh, and if we increase the size of the repository i'm, I'm sure we will have uh, uh, much larger differences so so i've done this once or i've done done this actually twice to confirm if uh, uh, is my perform are my performing results profiling results correct or not uh, maybe i need to do this with a, a wider uh, a variety of repository size to confirm that okay, um, the redundant fetch is actually the removal is actually improving the performance. But oh. I think this is yeah, yes, ma. That's that's gorgeous. So so this was with command line Git as the implementation or with JGit as the implementation. Command line Git. Excellent. Okay, so then your Java flight recorder could could not even could not have any impact actually on the on the actual operations performed by CLI Git because it's a separate subprocess. So you're, that gives me even more confidence in your benchmark numbers and your measurements because, all right, there's, there's not even the, the profiling from the Java flight recorder component basically pauses or, or has just subprocess or just process impact, not, it can't touch the Git command line process that's a C program running entirely separate very nice excellent okay so yes. so at three that large large repository that, that's really cool so um so for this issue this is this is what uh, we've done so the next step forward for us is to implement the performance improvement inside the the plugins and uh, to do that we've uh, figured out two steps right now the first is to provide a compatibility switch to the users the switch is going to be basically for users we were assuming that once we uh, once we add the improvements whatever we get from the benchmarks we add those improvements inside the plugin there might be cases where the users uh, functionality might be affected performance might be affected in some ways we do not okay we did not anticipate so we are providing a switch and it's going to look like uh, this roughly I have it. It's in the configured system in Jenkins. Uh, inside the Git plugin, you will have a checkbox which says revert performance improvement changes. So once checked, it will we'll, uh, revert to the old uh, version of the Git plugin. So, so this is the first step. The second step uh, is to actually selectively uh, switch between the implementation that is uh, the CLI Git or JGit, and from the benchmarks, we found out that for Git fetch, we found out that the size of repository 
is uh, is the is the biggest variable is the biggest parameter which is affecting its performance for an example one insight we have is that for for a repository less than 5 mb size jgit is going to perform better than git and for a larger repository git is considerably uh, performing way better it's performing way better than jgit so so if we want to implement that inside git plugin we need to estimate the repository size before creating the client and uh, so we have we've had some discussions on using heuristics like uh, using git ls remote to calculate the number of branches we have without cloning the repository inside the plugin and um, and we can use uh, a rough estimate so that we know maybe 50 branches means a large repository or uh, a lesser number means a smaller size could possibly use that second could be uh, uh, another option could be to use the existing rest apis exposed by github or gitlab where where they provide the size of the repository so we could also do that we are thinking how to uh, do it currently it's in process and any suggestions on how to do this how to estimate the repository size without cloning the repository first would be greatly appreciated so uh, yeah this is what we have done and what we plan to do and uh, any questions okay so so the the first the first cycle then is the redundant fetch you've already got a target where you say we know that there's a significant performance improvement to be gained here and this yeah. this redundancy affects both command line git and jgit so it's redundant in both cases it's not it's not just one or the other they're both doing this redundant fetch yes okay so everybody gets benefit if if no matter which implementation they chose or no matter which implementation we were to choose they get benefit potentially large potentially small but they get benefit by this 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 choice good okay and then oh go yeah. ahead no 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 please continue then on the on the um the benchmarking the jmh based benchmarking the the challenge there was that you've got to figure out before knowing before having performed the full operation you have to decide which implementation should should actually execute the oper the operation so before doing a fetch you need to 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 make a decision shall we use cli git or shall we use use yeah. jgit Yes. Excellent. That's something we would have to figure out. Yes. This uh, so, thank you very much. That I think think you've covered it well. Alex, did you have any questions you wanted to ask or let's see has Oleg joined us? Is oh. there um so with the JSON file that's created is there any way of visualizing that in Jenkins itself um as yes, a way to kind of get a, a snapshot at least? Yes, Alec. There, there is an already existing JMH visualizer plugin. Uh, I haven't tested it. I haven't integrated it with the Jenkins um, instance, but I have to test it. But it, what it does is it consumes the JSON file, and I, I maybe I have just one second how it looks. I can show you. It's called JMH report. and uh, okay i cannot see how the visualization is made i don't have it here but um there is a website which does the same thing so the plugin is basically used this website to do so and uh, i have a jmh json sample just bear with me for a second I can drop it. So this is how uh, the visualizer uh, visualizes the JSON. So once we uh, add that plugin uh, with our process of building the benchmarks, then we can see the results like this. That'd be awesome. Well, so you can open a, an infra issue to get that plugin installed on ci.jdata.jenkins.io. Right. Well, and and another variant here is that 
one of the benefits of ci.jenkins.io for Rishab is that whereas he's got his Mac, Mac OS machine that he runs base checks on, um, ci.jenkins.io provides him access to ARM64, to AMD64, to S390X, and to PowerPC. So, mm -hmm. so he can safety check that, hey, are the benchmarks that we're using representative even across the different environments that ci.jenkins.io represents. Oh, and Windows. Yes, I forget. There's one other platform there. And we, we regularly have surprises with Windows. So, Yes. So in the, then the second question I have is, uh, is the integration of JMH stuff, um, is that something that can be easily added to maybe the parent POM and, and optionally enabled for all plugins? Or is there a plan to do anything like that? So it's, it's oh, go ahead, Rishab. I should not answer. This is yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. So yes, there is an option. The, uh, the Java, the Jenkins test harness already has, uh, it has the, uh, the, the JMH harness inside uh, the dependency. So once you have, so there's a version uh, for the POM you need to have uh, for Jenkins for that particular dependency. Once you have a, uh, the upgrade, I don't remember the version, I think it's 2.5 uh, for the Jenkins test harness. Once you have that, you, you don't need anything else. Just you can uh, use the JMH uh, benchmarks inside your plugin, in any plugin. That was done before, it was done in a previous GSOC project, role strategy plugin. Okay, and does it require um, special tests or can, like do you have to mark tests as part of the GMH data collection or whatever? I, I can actually show you uh, how is a benchmark made. So, uh, so yes, like J unit test, it's, 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 in a, in a, it's a little similar like that. So you, you annotate it with a benchmark um, annotation and you need a benchmark runner as well, uh, which will identify the benchmarks and run it with some options you'll need. The, the options can be the, the uh, how you want the results, average time or the throughput time, whatever you want, uh, how much you want to warm up the benchmarks before you run them, uh, the, unit, the time unit folks, the JVM folks you want. Uh, so all of those options, they are included in the runner and that class, uh, so how do you run that? So there's a profile in Maven, uh, Maven profile, a JMH benchmark. So your benchmarks will be, uh, will run from that uh, command and uh, you'll have a generated JSON report uh, from that uh, command. And uh, if you want to in integrate uh, the, the, the benchmarks, you want to run them on cijenkins.io, there's, there's already a, uh, build step called run benchmarks. You just have to add that in your uh, Jenkins file. And uh, if you have benchmarks, the, uh, the, it will, they will be run on uh, the CI Jenkins infrastructure. That's with really JSON cool. report. Yeah. Yes, Alex. Cool, thank you. So, Rishab, would you, would you show the Jenkins file? I, I'm, I'm enamored with, with how elegant the work from the role strategy plugin made it for this, but then we found some some interesting issues that made me beg Rishab to do some extensions. So in the in the Git client plugin, he's going to show us um, what the Jenkins file looks like. Yeah. So uh, so this is the step which enables running the benchmarks and uh, we provide uh, the name of the JSON we want as an output. So before, uh, so what was happening before was that for every pull request, for every branch Mark was creating for testing, the benchmarks, they, so they, they have a considerable time duration. They run for maybe an hour, two hours, or four hours, depends on the kind of benchmarks we have. It takes time. So uh, it is an unnecessary addition for people who do not want to, uh, Test the performance, maybe. So, so what we've done is a simple uh, pattern matching that we will run the benchmarks only for the master branch or for any branch which is related to GSOC. So it's it's pretty simple. Yeah. See, for me, for me, Alex, the treat here was that somebody else had taken the time. The the last year role strategy had taken the time to create this plugin, this pipeline shared library called Run Benchmarks. 
And so Rishab was able to, without, without doing anything more than using run benchmarks, he gets it to execute now on the ci.jenkins.io infrastructure. And yeah, then awesome. for, for my needs, he also gets the, the, the ability to put conditionals in there so we don't have to run it on any branches except specific targets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. So okay. that's it from my side. Excellent work, Rishab. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you, and good luck with your your ongoing efforts. Um, it's it, I'm excited to to be able to announce the, the the release of the Git plugin that includes this. This will be so cool. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Mom. Okay, so I should stop sharing my screen. Yeah, and I'm going to switch on screen share and let's take a look at the next topic. It was that we want to do. Yeah, whoops, share screen, really, there, okay. I think the next topic is around the Alpine image. Oh, I didn't take any notes, Rishab. I'll, I'll insert some notes here on your, your results so that we've got them in the text as well. The recording of the, of the meeting will be posted uh, shortly after the meeting. Okay, should I add them the notes while you're kind Oh, of that would be it? great if you're willing to do it. That would be wonderful. I'll do that. So, Adopt OpenJDK for Docker on Alpine, Debian Buster, and CentOS. So Alex, this was for me a, an excuse to just have a, a conversation with you to be sure that I've understood what, what we're expecting in PR956 and what we should be reviewing. Sure. So as far as I can tell, it's giving us an, a nice integrated new structure where we say we start with the JDK target is the first part of the directory name, then the operating system, and then the, um, the what do you call it, the JVM optimization technology, whether a hotspot or open J9. Yes, that's correct. And so, so then what I was trying to decode was how does that map to tags in the repository? So for instance, I was looking for a Debian squeeze based version of this and didn't detect one if is that have i misunderstood there's buster so there's debian 10 buster in the slim image but there doesn't appear to be a buster oh no there is buster but somehow or other i didn't find that label okay so i oh this is jdk 11 i was looking for jdk 8 with buster so what you've done here is if using Java 11, I get the newest version of, of Debian, not the old version of Debian. Well, so this is just taking exactly what we had before oh. and migrating the structure. So it, it doesn't, um, like I, the only image, new image I added, I believe, is the uh, is a JDK 11 Alpine. Everything else is already existing. I see. Okay, so so the the, the directory structure is a, a refactoring in that sense, not an increment of adding a whole bunch of new distributions. Thanks, I had misunderstood that. Yeah, and so the the, the directory structure was changed, and then the base image um, was changed such that it uses the adopt of JDK. Right, and um, so that's that's this here. <clears throat> which in particular with Alpine is a, a real win for us because it gives us a newer version of, of the Alpine base operating system, right? Instead of 3.9, it's now 3.11. Correct. It's whatever their latest is. Yeah, exactly. And it's since the Alpine project has stopped, stopped any, any work, or I guess it's the wrong way to say it, Open JDK as a project is no longer publishing updates to the Alpine image, right? It's it's stuck on Java 8 212. As well as um, they're, they are not publishing correct images for um, other architectures. Ah, ah, okay, all right. That's a big problem too. Okay, so the, the, the transition here to adopt OpenJDK gives us a more current operating system base, a more current JDK, something that the, the project Adopt Open JDK is actually actively testing. And, and we get a better base image for ourselves. Correct. Excellent. Okay. Thank you.
All right. So I, one of the one of my pleas to the to viewers of the video is this is a great excuse to do additional testing to help us as we evaluate this because it's it. So the intent here is not to alter what we're delivering in the sense of base operating system version, but we are altering which operating system we're using or which which base image we're using. So instead of using um, OpenJDK, we'll use Adopt OpenJDK. Correct. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Okay. That. Thank you for that help. That was that was what I needed. If there are, are there any other topics we should review today? I don't think so. All right, let's call it a, call an end to the meeting. Rishab, thanks very much. Excellent summary, great results, and looking forward to further. Alex, thanks for your time as well. A, po a recording of the Thank meeting so will be posted within about an hour, hour and a half. Thanks, thanks Mark. Thanks, Alex. Bye.